Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to come together and to worship you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege we have to come together and praise you this morning, Lord. Thank you for bringing everybody here safely today. Thank you for the hedge of protection you put around us. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us godly wisdom today. Give us the wisdom to follow the Holy Spirit. And Father, I pray that everything we do here today be led by you and not by man. Let your word come forth through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. It is. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we, we're going to be a lively church. If you'd have been in that other one, Don said, I wish, I wish we'd have videoed the first one. But, you know, you, you go by what the Lord, well, I don't plan this things out. It's all the Lord's doings. But um, the Holy Spirit, if, you, if you're walking in the Holy Spirit, you're going to have a little bit of fire in you. You're going to have some want to. Some, uh, Adam, Adam got up here and got everybody to smiling, sort of got us started, so... Before he gets up here and makes you smile, just go ahead and smile, unless you ain't got no teeth, and uh, you can hold back on it then. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, any announcements? Anything, Stephen, none, Brent, got anything? Okay, Adam will give you his when he gets up here, and um, does anybody in here, anybody else have an announcement? Okay, we got uh, a sign-up sheet out there for the nursery. We need to get some help to finish out through the summer. And then we'll go into the next school year, uh, school year next ch uh, church year in September. And we'll business meeting is Wednesday night at 6.30. We don't, the only thing I know that's on the agenda is um, to get our committee appointed. So we'll have probably a short business meeting. And we will get the people elected then after that to start the uh, next church year in September. But until then, we've got to get through this next couple of months of summertime with some help in the nursery. If you can work on a Wednesday night, if you could work one of the services on Sunday morning, whatever you could do, uh, if you could help, just sign up out there on one of those sheets. Does anybody else have an announcement now? Anything else? We do have the offering plate outside after this. There will be an offering plate out there for you to put money in for the live streaming. The first... Uh, service this morning there was a, a good offering for the live streaming and um people had to sometimes you know you have a special offering somebody will take their tithes and put it in special offer well that it's not a tithe anymore at that point but this morning in that first service the tithe was normal and the and the the we had about forty four hundred dollars that came in for the live stream equipment which was a good offering to go on that so if you can give in any way Please do, and if you can't, that's fine too. The Lord takes care of all that. Um, Adam, you got something this morning? You know, normally I do see a little bit more smiling on the second service. People a little bit more awake, a little bit more alive. <clears throat> Guess what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we can come in here and be excited because why? We have the Spirit of God inside of us, and He gives us the strength to smile even when we don't feel like it sometimes. I'm going to read out of Psalms 113 this morning. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. Now, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you go through the week, you have a rough time, and you say, I, I just don't know what... You know what? We all have a reason to praise this morning. You woke up. You got to church. You were able to get dressed. You had a ride to get here. You are among other Christian friends that and family that are in here. We've got a reason to praise the Lord. So as they begin to worship, I know the special they're about to sing is powerful. As they begin to worship, praise the Lord. Worship Him because He's well-deserved. Amen.
every lie and every doubt this is my surrender and I will make a room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever
you Lord oh thank you for that day Lord thank you for that day glory to you thank you for the forgiveness thank you for that perfect one that gave his life on the cross thank you Lord that you made a way for us to be forgiven you made a way for us to have eternal life thank you Lord for being so good to us thank you Lord for the joy Thank you for the life that we have. And thank you for the peace that only you can give us. And I pray, Lord, as we go through this service today, that our heart and mind of praise be stayed upon you. And that we worship you in a way that would please you, Lord. And I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Going through some difficult times, and we've been talking about that the last few weeks, but this morning the Lord has sent us something, is always an absolute truth, and we're going to go to Hebrews to start with, Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to look at there. At verse 11, Hebrews 11, verse 11, I'm going to go through several scriptures, and then I'm going to hit also on uh, one that I used a few weeks back, but from a different angle, but I'm going to go through several scriptures setting that, that up, and in Hebrews 11, 11, it says, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. One more time. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, she bore, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. What, is, what does it mean by past the age? What is that? Past childbearing age. You know, the way Lord made the human race is that you get, we get older. 
And as a lady gets to a certain point, she gets past the childbearing age. Sarah was well past the childbearing age. She was on up there. But she had a promise. The Lord had promised that she was going to have a child. And we know, most of you know the story that she tried to fix it herself and made a mess out of it that we're still paying for today. But there's a statement in there that we need to look at. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. She bore a child when she was past the age, and it says because. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. She had a promise from the Lord, and she had a belief or a hope in him. She hoped that that was going to be the truth. She had that hope there that the Bible talks about in a lot of places, a hope in the Lord, a hope in Jesus. She hung, hung on to that hope. Now, at, my, at times in there, it shows that she would uh, play around with the doubt, and I'm sure she dealt with that a lot, but she still had that hope in the back of her mind. She had that child, and she had that hope in Jesus. Now, go to uh, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Philippians 3. 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Put 13 back up there for a second. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. The Lord wants us to have a hope in Jesus Christ. He wants us to have that where, you know, depression is gripping a lot of people right now. Being depressed. Uh, this, this whole situation, all the things that are going on, the um, COVID-19, all the rioting and all those things, just depression changing what we have known uh, trying to change a country that has given us freedom and things in the past that we wanted to hold on to. And, and you see things starting to change and you get, you, you could get depressed. You could be very depressed. And a lot of people are, are bordering on depression now from the differences that we're having to deal with. Bordering on depression. I told them in the first service, we used to have a guy that, Came in on Wednesday nights, and he sat right out, right down here, and he would. Uh, this is a few years back, and he would. He would talk to me. We developed a relationship. He had some medical problems. He lived in Jacksonville. He came out here every Wednesday night for a good while, and he come up to me after one Wednesday night, and he said, I, "I'm concerned about you. I'm kind of worried." I said, "Why?" He said, I have done some studying and I read where 67% of the Baptist pastors are in depression. 67%. He said, I'm concerned about you. I said, well, I appreciate that, but I don't think I'm there yet. But what he gave was actually the truth. That is the truth. Now, a lot of people don't think a pastor or a preacher would get depressed, but that is a one of Satan's mighty tools is to get people depressed, get them into that. Well, I'll tell you, I've had a, I've had a problem myself here with this, all the things that are going on, all the changes that are happening in the COVID-19 and the things we're dealing with, and then, and then this rioting, which seems absolutely nuts because you're, they were riding over something that we, everybody was agreeing on, made no sense. It had to be something more than that. So, you know, you can get... You can get depressed on that, and I see, you know, we got situations here with the school. What are we going to do with school? What are we going to do with church? How are we going to handle things at church and, and uh, in the family? We went through a period of time we didn't even, weren't even able to see the grandkids for a little while there, and, and I'm, you know, I'd get out in the back there, and I'd literally, uh, and I don't, Frankie may have picked up on this, I don't know, but I, I couldn't watch and still can't. Movies that are going to have a one of these sad endings. You know, they used to, they made good endings. Now they make a lot of sad endings on purpose, make it crazy. 
And I couldn't, I, I couldn't stand that. Get up, I went go outside. I get out back and go up in the woods or up in the field somewhere. And I got to the point to where I was dealing with all this stuff. And I, and, and I said, Lord, you got to help me. I get into tears and say, you're going to have to do something here, Lord. I don't know what it is. It just seems like I'm not dealing with this. I, I don't know what's going on here with all this thing, all this coming at us, all these decisions needing to be made, and, and, and it seems like the world's coming apart. And I dealt with that, and I'm not completely out of that, but the Lord's really helped me, and this is one way here is He is reminding me over and over and over now, you have a hope in me. You look forward, not backward. You, if you know me as your personal Savior, if we know Jesus as Lord and Savior, Lord and Savior, not just Savior, but Lord and Savior, and we live that way, we have a hope in Jesus every day. We will get up in the morning, we ought to have that hope in Jesus. We ought to be excited. Don, Don Mangrum used to come in and tell me, he said, I can't wait till Sunday so I can see what the Lord's going to do. I can't wait to get to church Sunday so I can see what the Lord's going to do. He didn't say, I can't wait to get to church Sunday so I can hear somebody sing a, a good special or wait to get to church Sunday so I can hear what you're going to preach. He said, I can't wait to get to church Sunday so I can see what the Lord's going to do. He was excited about getting to church. He had a hope in Jesus knowing that Jesus was the author of the beginning and the ending. He handles everything. He wants us to have a hope. He wants us to have an excitement. He wants us to have a desire to see what he's going to do. He, you know, if, if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? Is that not scripture? If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? He has shown me over and over and over, over the years since I accepted the call to preach, if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? I have seen him work out things over and over and over that I didn't have to even get to dick to. I, and I would pray that sometimes. Lord, will you deal with this before I have to? And a lot of times he would. He would do that. But it's amazing that the hope that's in Jesus and the Bible tells us to have that hope, have that faith, that desire. Look at... Um, what were we in there? Philippians 3. Go to Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. And just leave it up there until we go to the next. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Think about what he's saying there. And you're going to have these naysayers are going to say, that's not for you. That's for Israel. That's for the nation. It is. But have you forgotten that we are grafted in? The person that says that don't, don't seem to read all the scriptures. The scriptures tell me I'm grafted in. You know what happens when a limb is grafted into a tree? It becomes part of that tree. Do you know where that limb gets its, its the things that it lives by, its nutrients and all that? It gets them from the same roots that every other limb in that tree gets. That's why he used some of those terms. We are grafted in. So this scripture is for us also. When we pass through, the Lord's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's going to take care of us. When we, when we get into these situations where it seems like we're just overwhelmed, He's there. We have a hope in Jesus, a trust there, knowing that He is going to handle this one way or the other. We have, the, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. You know, this actually has happened. With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they actually were in the flames. They were in the fire. But the Lord will never leave you, never forsake you. Then he did not leave nor forsake Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though they said, even if he don't save us, he's still God. We're still going to worship him and nobody else. But he did save them. He was in the fire with them, and they came out and didn't even smell like smoke. They had a hope in the Lord. 
a hope, a trust. We can get, the devil works on us. We can get depressed. We can get down and out. And you know, it, it's not so much that there's something wrong with you. It's just that we're not hoping and trusting in the Lord enough. He's real. He's alive. His word is true. And everything that he says to us is a fact. We go on to uh, Psalms thirty-three, eighteen. Psalm 33, 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. On those who hope in his mercy. Last week we talked about that fear. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. He's watching those that fear him. He's, he doesn't, he's not worried. It's not like you've got off out there in the woods and got lost. He's there. He's got his eye on you if you fear him and hope in his mercy. Okay, you are in a bad spot. Okay, you're in a bad position. Okay, things are coming down on you. But God hadn't changed. He hadn't left you. He's not any different today than he was yesterday. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same. He can pull Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of that fire. Pull Daniel out of that lion's den. He can pull us out of whatever we're in. There's evil and there's good. And it has been for a long time. There's light and there's darkness. Light always overcomes darkness. Once I flip that switch on, when I come in here on Sunday mornings or, or, dear, or sometimes at night, it's totally dark in here. I open that door, I flip that light switch on. When the light comes on, it ain't dark no more. I ain't never turned the light on and the light come on, it still be dark. It can't do it. It's the same way with good and evil. Good, good overrides evil. We have a choice. We have a choice to go with the Lord, trust in the Lord, serve the Lord with everything that's within us, give our life to Him, and walk in the light and the good. Or we can go the other direction. But I guarantee you, if we choose to go with the evil, evil is what we're going to get. So we hope in Jesus. We trust in Him. We hope in Him. Go to uh, Je Jeremiah 29, 11. Most of you will probably know this. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. The Lord is saying, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking these thoughts toward you. I'm giving you peace. I'm giving you a future. I'm giving you hope. You don't have to get down and out. No matter what's going on, it can come out good. No matter what's going on, the Lord can turn it around. No matter what's going on, He can use it for His honor and glory. But we have a hope in Him. No matter what I'm dealing with, I got that hope in Jesus. I got that trust in him. Put your faith there. Trusting in him. Doesn't matter what it is. And the more we do it, and the more we see him move, the stronger that faith is going to get. The stronger that faith is going to get. You know, it's a blessing to me to see the, see the Lord move uh, like he moves. And, and to see him move even in this church like he's moved. At one time, there's no way I would, I would have even been able to, to get a hold of that and believe that he could do something like raise somebody from the dead. You know, we had 200 people here that day that he, that he brought Noel back to life right there. Uh, over 200 people. They saw what was going on. But I guarantee you, there is a lot of people that you go tell that, they're not going to believe it. They would not believe it. If you were here and you saw it, even some of those people have a hard time believing it. I don't have a hard time believing it at all. I had a hope in Jesus when he told me what to do when I went there and he had no breath and he had that slime all over him that I'd never seen before in the sweat form. He had, his, his eyes were rolled back and he was the color of my hair. And that's bad. 
When I went out there and did what the Lord said do, he came back. I had a hope in Jesus. I had a hope that Jesus could do what he says he's going to do. He will turn your situation around. He will turn this situation around. He can make it turn out for your good. Psalm 71, 14. Psalm 71, 14. But I will hope continually. Oh, this is going to get you now. Got me. I will hope continually. And I will praise you yet more and more. How many of us are praising him more now than we were a year ago? How many of us are praising him more now than we were 10 years ago? How many of us are praising him more now than we were 30 years ago? I'm telling you, the scriptures teach us how to praise, but how many people will not accept it, will not receive it? You know why? Because we are proud. We were raised a certain way. We are different. Our personality is not there. It don't say nothing about personality. He tells us how to worship. He tells us how to praise. I don't have a problem with somebody not doing it because I, I was there. I couldn't do it. I wasn't going to do something stupid. You know, I wasn't going to let somebody see me doing something stupid. Well, I, now I'll just tell you I don't care. It does not matter now because my God who is in heaven deserves any and every kind of praise and worship I can give him. It, all of it. It doesn't make any difference. When I start worrying about what somebody's going to think about how I'm praising, my praise is out the door. My worship is gone. It's amazing how many times, though, that we saw praise start and victory happen in the Bible. Praise start and victory happen. Put the praisers out front. Ahead of the soldiers? You know, he actually did that. Yes. They began to praise. The battle was won. We praise him more. We should praise him more and more and more. We should want him more and more and more. We should have that hope in us continually. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I'm going to go now for just a few minutes to Acts 16. Um, I'm not even sure of what the scripture there is, is going to be, but I know, let me just go to verse 25, Stephen, there you go. But at midnight, Paul and Silas was put in jail. Now remember that Paul and Silas had cast that demon out. I went through this for in another, at another angle a few weeks back where they cast out that demon from that girl that was giving it, telling everybody's fortune. And the people that owned her was making a lot of money. They cast that demon out. They didn't make money anymore, so they had Paul and Silas thrown into jail, into the inner parts of the jail, but they beat them half to death before they put them in there, literally. They beat them across the back, across the legs. They just beat them and beat them and beat them. And then they threw them into the inner parts of the jail. They put shackles on them, and they're sitting there in the inner part of the jail with those shackles beat half to death, Guards and everything around. Well, the jailer that's in charge goes to sleep. And here's what it says in verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Don't forget what he said right there. I didn't catch that. The Lord showed it to me this morning in the sermon. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. They were praying they were singing hymns to God. They were worshiping God. They were praising God. And the prisoners were listening to them at this time. So at, at midnight, they're doing this, and the prisoners are, miss, are, are listening, and there is an earthquake, a major earthquake, that just tears things all to pieces, and the gates come open in that prison. They're, everything's unlocked and gone. And here's Paul and Silas. They're, they're free. Their shackles come off. The jailer wakes up and he knows if those prisoners are gone, he's a dead man. They kill him. That's just the way it was. So he takes his sword. He's going to kill himself. And Paul yells and says, stop. Don't do that. We are all still here. You ever re re realize that? He said, we are all here. We are all here. So that, why didn't those guys leave? Why didn't those prisoners leave? Undoubtedly, they had come to know the Lord. They would have they got gone. 
They would have left out of there. When those gates flung open and everything was free, they would have got gone. But they stayed there. Paul and Silas stayed there. The jailer was then saved. The jailer's family was saved. But why did Paul and Silas praise him and sing to him? Why did they do that when they had just been beaten half to death? Why did they do that when it looked like they were shackled for life? They're not going anywhere. It looked like their life was about to end. Why did they sing praises to the Lord? Because they had a hope in Him. It didn't matter how bad it had gotten. They had a hope in Him. He was still God. He was still the Lord. We're still going to praise Him. We've got a hope in Him. He can move when nobody else can move. He can move when nothing else can move. Remember that everything is possible with God. Not with man, but with God. Whatever situation you're dealing with, whatever is going through your mind now, however bad things look right now, God hadn't left us. God is still, I know this is a cliche, but God is still the one that has the last say. The last say. Yeah, man does have some control. He's given him some freedoms here to make decisions, and that's true. That's true. Last week, in going over that sermon on fear, I showed how we actually have some control over how long we live. I showed the scriptures on that. If we have a fear of God... And we have that relationship with Him, and we're walking in that relationship, we lengthen our days. It said the fear of God lengthen your days. So Paul and Silas, they've, turned, they've been set free, but the Lord didn't let them go. He directed them. They were singing because they knew they had a hope in God. They didn't know what He was going to do. I don't believe they knew He was going to have an, get, send an earthquake, but He knew. It was going to do something. Now, I'm telling you this morning, if you're walking with the Lord and you, you get, you're getting depressed over things, things are bothering you, and, you, you know, this is unusual these days that we're in. They are. I don't like them, and I'm sure most of you don't like them. But the hope that we have in God ought to be exciting to us. It ought to be exciting. You know, we really ought to have the same attitude that as Don came in and said, I can't wait to get to church Sunday morning. I can't wait to get in the service to see what God's going to do. We could get up with that attitude every day. I can't wait to see what God's going to do today. I can't wait to see what God's going to do today. He will still move. All things work to good for those that love the Lord, call according to His purpose. In the last scripture... I think that I'm going to go to today is in Romans 15, 13. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill you with joy. Fill you with peace in believing. You know, it comes back down to something that we've been preaching now for literally two or three years or more. When the Lord put it on us to preach, believe, believe, believe. Believe what the Word says. Don't understand it? That's okay. But believe it. Well, I just can't see that. That's okay. But believe it. Believe what it says, and he says right here, in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Abound in hope. Abound in hope. Abound in hope. You got joy because you got hope in Jesus. You know you've got a hold of the one that gave us eternal life. The one that gave us the joy. It gave us the promises that he said are already yes and amen. The promises that are in the Bible are for us, just like we were talking about. We're grafted in. When we're grafted in, we're part of that tree, part of that family of God. We are literally his children. So we should, we should have a attitude of joy 
an attitude of happiness. Sure, we're going to have things happen that's going to knock us down a little sometimes. But when we put our trust and our hope in Jesus, that is going to change. It will change. And notice he says, by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And remember, you can't have the power of the Holy Spirit unless you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Can't do it. You can't get the Holy Spirit without being saved, without having Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So when we look at these things this morning, and we look at the situation we're in in everybody's life, everybody down here on earth and in our nation especially has been touched by the things that are taking place, been touched by the COVID-19, been touched by the rioting, been touched by all these things. And uh, you think the devil is not a confuser? Remember this, confusion is of the devil. Confusion is of the devil. Why would there be rioting if there's not confusion? Because I haven't heard anybody say anything in disagreeing. In the situation that there that started the protest, everybody was agreeing. I didn't hear anybody disagreeing with the fact this needs to be taken care of. This needs to be dealt with. It's time. But when the devil gets into these kind of things, he creates confusion. And all kind of mess happens. Well, remember this. The Lord created the devil. The Lord created the devil. It ain't catching him off guard. And the Lord is for you, not against you. And the, and the Bible tells us that any weapon formed against you will not prosper. And it also tells you that if you know the Lord and you are walking with him, anything you put your hand to will prosper. Our God's for us. He is on our side. All we got to do is make sure we're on His. We have to make sure we're on His. He will prosper your life. He will take care of your life. And as I read some of these things in the other service I brought out, sometimes you think, well, these things are for the little ones. Or they're for the teenagers. Or they're for people like Maddie and Dylan that just got married starting out. There ain't nothing in Scripture that says nothing like that. Age does not matter. If you're still on earth, you're here for a reason. And God wants to use you. So have that hope in Jesus and seek the direction He wants you to go. As we stand today, I want you to be open, open with the Lord this morning. Do you... Have you had the hope in Jesus you should have? Have you trusted in Him like you should have right now? Whatever the Holy Spirit's dealing with you on, the altar's open. Please don't let the devil hold you away. If the Lord pulls you to the altar, if He's convicting you of anything or leading you to pray for somebody, please be obedient to that this morning as we sing. Father of life, Seated on your throne of grace. Amen. That's right. It's only by your mercy we are saved. Only by your mercy. And Lord, you have said that if we call upon your name, we and our families will be saved. So
never failing to forgive each moment is a gift from you to live we are only here to tell the world about your grace until the day you take us all the way Okay, Wednesday night, we will have a, it should be a short business meeting because there's, uh, there's nothing on the agenda but the uh, committee to pick the officers. And so we will go through that business meeting. Then we'll go into Bible study on Wednesday night. It's starting at 630. Next Sunday morning, we still have 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. I've had several people ask, when are we going to get to go back like we were? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. There's a, a lot of people wanting to do that, but there's also a, a few that are very skittish about it right now. So we're, we're waiting on the direction from the Lord. Until we get that direction, we will keep doing what we're doing until he shows us differently. So next Sunday morning, right now, the plans are still 9 o'clock service and 11 o'clock service. Does anybody have anything there? Any questions on anything? One thing we can do that we may be a little bit short of doing right now is inviting people. Um, we, it would be good to still invite people to church. It's uh, when the devil hit us with this stuff, it disrupted a lot. Um, we were uh, we were moving pretty good, and he put a kink in it. But I do believe that the Lord will turn this around and use it for His good. So invite folks to come to church next week. Anyone else? Anybody? Praise the Lord. Um, Barney, would you dismiss us this morning, please?